Have you ever wondered about the story behind one of the world's most potent and potentially dangerous substances, methamphetamine? It's a name you've likely heard, a substance that's infiltrated communities, destroyed lives, and even altered the course of history. In pop culture, it was the backbone of one of the greatest TV shows of our generation, Breaking Bad. But methamphetamine, or meth, isn't just a substance abused in dark corners of society, like New Mexico. It has a surprising twist to its tail. This highly addictive substance was once a widely prescribed medication. And believe it or not, it still has some medical uses today. And yet, there's a great deal of misunderstanding about what methamphetamine really is, how it came to be, and why it's so dangerously addictive. We're also going to bust some myths and misconceptions about his cousin, Adderall. What really sets these two apart? Stay with me as we venture into the gritty world of methamphetamine. And who am I? My name is Salman Aziz Mirza. I am a triple board certified psychiatrist, certified in adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and addiction medicine. And I am not afraid to say that I have prescribed methamphetamine to some of my patients. If you want to learn from a trusted source on topics that you may be a bit hesitant about asking, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel or follow along with my other socials where I do all the hard work for you and make it easier for you, which also makes it me a little bit easier for me to understand stuff too. <laughs> So what exactly is methamphetamine? Methamphetamine is a powerful stimulant that affects our central nervous system. In everyday language, it has a profound impact on our brain and the nerves that control how we function and behave. It typically appears as a white, odorless, bitter tasting crystalline powder that easily dissolves in water or alcohol. In its crystal form, it looks like clear crystals or bluish white rocks. You might know it by its street names such as meth, crystal, ice, or blue, among others. Now, how does methamphetamine work on the brain? Methamphetamine increases the release and blocks the reuptake of a class of neurotransmitters called monoamines, particularly dopamine, but also norepinephrine and serotonin. Dopamine is involved in motivation, the experience of pleasure, and motor function, among other things. When someone uses methamphetamine, it causes a massive increase in dopamine in the brain. This leads to intense feelings of pleasure and euphoria, increased energy, and hyperactivity. This is the high that users describe. But along with this high comes a host of negative effects. These can include rapid or irregular heartbeat, increased blood pressure, elevated body temperature, and decreased appetite. Over time, methamphetamine use can lead to severe dental problems, leading to the characteristic meth mouth. Intense itching leading to skin sores, anxiety, confusion, insomnia, psychosis, and potentially violent behavior. Not to mention, repeated methamphetamine use can result in devastating addiction, which can be incredibly challenging to overcome. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Now that we understand what methamphetamine is, let's delve into its intriguing and complex history. I love this stuff. It's always fascinating to learn about where these came from and how we used various substances throughout time. So, methamphetamine was first synthesized in Japan in 1893, but it wasn't until the mid 20th century that the drug began to see widespread use. During World War II, both Axis and Allies forces used methamphetamine to keep their soldiers awake and alert. It was an invaluable tool on the battleground, both on the ground and especially in the air, used to fight fatigue and enhance performance. In the post-war period, methamphetamine was introduced to the pharmaceutical market. It was prescribed for a variety of ailments, such as a diet aid and an antidepressant. This was a time when the dangers of methamphetamine were not yet fully understood. However, as we moved into the 1960s and the 70s, a shift occurred. Methamphetamine began to be produced illicitly and its misuse started to misspread. The drug's addictive potential became alarmingly clear. By the late 20th century, the meth epidemic had arrived. Meth labs sprouted up across the United States and elsewhere, with clandestine production causing a surge in availability. These labs often use volatile chemicals, leading to a high risk of fires and explosions. Furthermore, the process creates toxic waste that can contaminate the surrounding area and pose a threat to public health. In response to the rise in these meth labs, particularly in the United States, laws were enacted to make the precursor ingredients harder to acquire. The Combat Methamphetamine Act of 2005, for instance, regulates over-the-counter sales of cold medications containing pseudoephedrine, 
a key ingredient in the production of methamphetamine. So we've seen that methamphetamine, originally developed as a useful medication, has morphed into a substance of widespread misuse. But this potent and dangerous substance isn't completely banned from the medical field, even today. While methamphetamine is often associated with illegal use and addiction, it's crucial to note that it still has a role in the medical field, albeit a limited one. Methamphetamine, under the brand name Dazoxin, is a medication that doctors can prescribe to their patients. Like I said before, I have prescribed it to great results. The Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, has approved Dazoxin for certain medical conditions. It is prescribed for the treatment of Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, and in certain cases, for obesity. In ADHD, it works to improve attention span and reduce impulsivity in patients, and when used for obesity, it helps in the short-term weight reduction, mostly through suppression of our appetite. However, due to the high potential for misuse and dependency, methamphetamine's use in medicine is heavily regulated. Its prescription is highly controlled and monitored. It's usually only prescribed after other treatments have been tried without success, and even then, the dosages are much lower than what is typically misused. As healthcare professionals, it's our responsibility to ensure the well-being of our patients. This includes careful and mindful prescription of potent substances like methamphetamine. Now let's discuss a topic that often causes confusion, the difference between methamphetamine and Adderall. You may have heard critics arguing that Adderall is the same thing as meth. Let's break this down a bit. It's true that both methamphetamine and Adderall are classified as amphetamines and central nervous stimulants. They both increase the levels of certain neurotransmitters in the brain, enhancing focus, attention, and alertness. However, their similarities largely end there. Chemically, Adderall is a mixture of four different amphetamine salts, while methamphetamine is a single compound with an additional methyl group. This may seem like a small difference, but for anyone who has ever taken organic chemistry, it is crucial. That additional methyl group makes methamphetamine more lipid soluble, allowing it to cross the blood-brain barrier more quickly. This leads to a quicker onset and a more potent effect. In terms of medical use, Adderall is widely prescribed for ADHD in certain sleep disorders. It has a well-established efficacy in managing these conditions. Methamphetamine, as we discussed a little bit earlier, is also used in treating ADHD, specifically in its FDA-approved form, Dazoxin, but its use is highly limited and often reserved for cases where other treatments have not been effective. Perhaps most importantly, there's a significant difference in the potential for dependence and harm between the two drugs. Methamphetamine is more potent, more addictive, and more damaging to the brain and body than Adderall. This isn't to say that Adderall is without risks. It absolutely carries potential for misuse and dependency, especially when used without a prescription or in ways not directed by a doctor, such as taking much more than prescribed. But compared to methamphetamine, its risks are significantly lower. So while methamphetamine and Adderall are both amphetamines and have some similarities, they are not the same thing. They differ in chemical structure, medical use, and most notably, in their potential for harm and addiction. Chemistry matters and dose makes a difference, keyboard warriors. We've covered quite a bit of ground in this video, and I want to thank you for sticking with me through this journey into the world of methamphetamine. It's my hope that you leave this discussion with a more informed understanding of this potent substance, as well as clearing up misconceptions and misinformation about substances like methamphetamine and Adderall as well. Learning more about this topic is essential, not just for personal knowledge, but also to foster healthier conversations about substance use and misuse. This is especially true in a world where the lines between factual information and sensationalized narratives can often become blurred. In our quest for knowledge, let's keep the conversation going. How do you think societal views on substances like methamphetamine and Adderall shape our responses to those struggling with substance use disorders? What other misconceptions about different substances would you like to see me clear up in future videos? Let me know and please share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit from this knowledge. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Let's continue to break down barriers, debunk some myths, and foster understanding in mental health and addiction medicine. Till next time, take care and be safe.